Hello, my name is Tino and today I'll show you my new laser machine I got from Gearbest. It's NJ Laser Master 3500. Let's start with an unboxing. Well, this is more unwrapping than unboxing, because there was no box at all. It's so good protected that there was almost no way to damage them during transport. But on the other side, there's just too much waste. Ok, what we got here? Short manual in a few different languages. 12 volts 2 amp power supply, back with accessories and pre-assembled engraver separated in two axes. Oh yes, and there come also protective glasses. Into accessories back we find USB cables, steel angles for optional mounting the laser, nuts for assembling the laser engraver, few testing pieces like cardboard and wood, focusing glass, zip ties, tools and whiteboard marker. Let's take a closer look to a laser now. It's got very interesting design, really simple assembly with just a few parts, but it's do their job good, so I complicate it and raise the price if not necessary. This is the base part, assembly with aluminium Y axis and two acrylic legs on ends. Each leg has got two plates of acrylic, I think it's just different grade of acrylic, so an outer side is better for a better look. On the bottom is soft pads, which prevent the move laser on table itself. On behind leg is mounted the electronic board. From outer side we can see the USB plug, power supply plug and the button to control laser in offline mode. And in inner side is a button direct out of the electronic board, which work like Y limit switch. This board is pretty good, it allows us to connect with NEA or GRBL software. Then we got also free output for Z axis, extra fan and some safe cape port. On Y axis is a carriage with a stepper motor on it, so the belt is fixed on one side of rail, go around the pulley and back on the other side of rail, where we set the belt engine. I just checked, but there is no extender to set the tightness of wheels. On that carriage is also a tiny board where is the X limit switch and connector to plug the laser. X axis is made even simpler, there is just an acrylic base plate which come attached to the Y axis. On that plate come aluminium rod with the motor on one side and the pulley for tightening the belt on the other side. On X axis carriage is attached only the laser with a fan, so weight there is pretty small and that's the reason why that design works also with higher speed. I got a few of these cheap machines like lasers and 3D printers, so I can tell that that kind of rails run really smooth and don't got too much clearance. I'll see how they turned out after time of using. If they will be neat I just make an extenders for the wheel so I can precisely set the clearance. There's a holder for attached really flexible laser cable and both belts are GT2, which is known as good. Let's assemble now those two parts together. First of all take the X axis and plug the laser connector to a board on Y axis carriage. It's a bit tight with free space, so be careful that the cable isn't squeezed somewhere. Then just attach the X axis to the screws and secure them with nuts. Plug the connector to X axis motor. Secure laser cable with a zip tie and we are done, laser is ready to action. I was wondering from the first time I see that laser how stable it is. Enough is my answer, because boot motors are on one side and work as counterweight on the laser when going to the end of rail. Before I plug the laser for the first time I put a piece of wood under, because I don't want to damage my fancy expensive bases. And now the software. Online instructions are so clear that work with that laser shouldn't be a problem. Here manual is a website address where to start and the model name, but you can simply scan the code and you'll be directed to a website. From there firstly download the driver and software, I choose last version. If you continue scrolling the manual you'll find also link for Android application, how to install everything, how to connect and so on, really clear manual. Now with a few click install the driver and run the NG software, it's bootable so we don't need to install them. First drive connection failed, that's because there's only one important thing when connecting. Firstly plug the power supply so the red LED on board glow, that means that the power is on. Then plug the USB cable into PC and when the PC recognizes new hardware start the program. With that procedure it always connects in the first try. When the laser connected to an AG software it instantly go to zero position, recognized by the limit switch, and the blue LED on board glow, that means that the laser is connected with an AG microcontroller on the board. Ok, we are now connected and that's what we see. Actually this is really simple software and offer us everything we want. 
Here on left we see some information about communication with the machine. Below is information about the laser and on top we got four tabs. First one is tutorial. That tab is depend on internet connection. We got some information here how to assemble the machine, how to set a focus and so on. Second tab is photo gallery, also depend on internet connection. So no internet, no pictures. We can find there more than 4000 pictures designed for a laser engraver. You can also filter them by the team. Nice, but they are all pretty small resolution. Next step is my collection. Here are the pictures we send with an application. More about that later. Then we got a control tab. Here we control with the machine or drag the picture into that field. If you want to engrave just the text, you can do it with a double click. And the last is CNC tab. Here we can import DXF or NC files. If you got internet connection, there is also a pair of manual how-to with the G-code. Let's make the first test now. I chose a photo gallery tab and click on some photo. It opened in a new window where we can crop the pictures. With a double click we select entire picture. Click next and we come to adjust site. There we can set the dimension of picture. We can set width or height, doesn't matter because the relations always stay the same. And sometimes you can set the exact dimension because software always fit dimensions to pixels not to millimeters. Go next to step 3. Here we can choose the type of engraving. It's more common use on grayscale photo engraving. Maybe I miss here a few slides for menu set the contrast and brightness. On step 4 we can edit the picture. We can rotate them, flip or reverse black and white. In that step we can also add the text. Just type what you want, set the font, size and so on, click insert and insert text to desired position. Dimension of engraving area is automatic increase. Ok, we prepared the photo for engraving and we are into control tab now. Here we got 4 buttons to change the position of engraving, but if we click on button for object framing we can change the position also with the mouse inside of working area. Another good thing here is a pointer. If we choose that function we can click on any position inside of working area and the laser instantly go to that position. It's really helpful for some accurate positioning. Then we got a settings menu. Here we can choose between fast and slow mode, which relates to the quality of engraving. We can set the brightness of laser in idle mode. If we reduce the power of laser focus can be adjusted much easier. And we can set also sensitivity of motion sensor. Fourth, green LED tell us the status about motion sensor. If it's ok, glow. If sensor detect motion it instantly stop working and LED start flashes. Then we must reset motion sensor into software and laser continue working. But if you set highest sensitivity laser stop itself by their own vibration. Just get in mind that that protection works only in AJ microcontroller. If we connect to a GRBL controller we are without that function. And then we got here two main settings. Laser power and burning time. It's just how many time it burn each pixel. More time, more effects, slower engraving. Best thing is that we can set these two settings online during engraving. So set for best result is easy. When I got everything prepared for engraving just press start button and that's it. Laser will frame object once more and then start engraving. We can also set here number of engraving. If we need more powerful laser like for cutting, we can set here that laser burn more times on same way with same settings. With pause button we can set engraving any time and continue from a pixel with pause. With stop button we disconnect the laser so it need to connect again and all our settings for that pictures are lost. A minute and 50 seconds later I got a result like this on a paper, with laser power on 100% and burning time 5 milliseconds. In right upper corner we can find a link to application. We just scan this code and install the application to Android phone. When we start the application we must to scan QR code on PC software, so the application connect with it. Then simply take a picture or choose one from your phone. You can crop the photo, rotate it and so on and then just send it. In a few seconds picture appear on PC software and there we continue with preparing to engraving.
It's a nice simply working application. Transferring the photo to a PC was never so easy. That photos are there saved into my collection tab. And pretty soon we got engraved photo. To engrave the photo from your PC, simply drag the photo into a control tab and window for preparing the photo will appear. Here you can see how different options of engraving look like, but still can get different results depend on laser power and burning time settings. Here on upper I set the burning time during engraving. Start with 10 milliseconds and drop to I think about 5 milliseconds. And here's my favorite, CNC tab. I got a DXF file of my logo exported to the CAD program where I draw it for a 3D print. Just click on open the XF file and drag the file into window. And then adjust the size you want and start engraving or cutting. Here you can still set the laser power and burning time. This clip is 4 times faster, so you can see that the cutting here is pretty slow. Firstly it cut a straight line and then go to curves, so it got a lot of dead moves. And also when it's not engraving it more really f slow. My logo dimension 50 by 50 mm will cut about 4 minutes, but all the straight lines are engraved twice. Maybe it's something wrong with my DXF files, li like with radius you can see here. When you're on CNC tab, you got everything explained how to create your own G-code file with the free software Inkscape. So I'm not showing you how to install and everything, because I'm already over 10 minutes, so I'll just show you how it looks. I type a few letters for a test and put them in a way and the, with the extension save it as NC file, which can be important into an AG software. From there just click open NC file, choose it, adjust the size and start cutting. Here you can see that it cut much more logical than the XF file. Here almost isn't that moves. Here on CNC cutting is visible every single vibration. That's why the tiny lines isn't strained here. All you need is slower down the laser with a burning time slider. But then you need to lower the power of laser if you don't want to burn everything. You can see the difference here. If you want to engrave just a text, double click into control tab and empty window will appear, where we can type the text, edit size and burn it. That laser works also with GRBL software. I just tried, but need to learn a lot of new stuff before using it. I try also with laser edition so I can tell you that you must enable hard reset, otherwise it won't connect. Then you must set up firstly because there are no limit switch. I just try and show you that it works. I think that's it about software. Now I will engrave and cut a few different materials and check the result. Here you can see the result on hardwood. Left one is from Neje and right one is from older 3000 mW laser I got. Same wood, same file, but the difference is huge. I don't want to compare these two lasers because the smaller laser is just a toy versus the Neje laser master. Size of that logo is 70 by 70 mm and need about 3 hours to engrave. Here I got some tough paper. I try to cut with 50 milliseconds, but it's not enough. With 100 milliseconds goes slowly, but it works. Here's 1 mm fleece. Cut without problem, I think also fabric can cut easily, but didn't remember to try it. Two millimeter sponge. It must cut like a butter, but no, I got serious problem to cut that, but only bright colors. I think they transfer too much light. Look at here in white. White is one most terrible to cut. Meanwhile black is cut at like a butter. One millimeter balsa. Cut without problem in a single go. One millimeter quality heavy or play wood. Can't cut even if we cut multiple times, because into cut become lot of smoke dust and laser can't cut deeper. 10 mm balsa, 100% laser power and 100 milliseconds. I try to cut one square 3 times and other 5 times. That's the result, not much deeper for additional 2 times of cutting. But I must tell that I make every test with the laser on table and 80 mm wood under the laser, so I was a bit out of perfect laser focus point. 
2 mm bars are still cut good. I think if I leave the whole laser for the same as protective wood under the laser we can cut 3 to 4 mm bars, maybe also 5 mm with a few go. 5 mm black heart protective sponge, cut like butter. It's definitely great for cutting stickers, just need to set the right settings, so the stickers isn't burnt around and cut slowly for a better finish. You can see the difference here, boot is cut with the same NC file, one with 15 milliseconds and laser power 100%, another with 60 milliseconds and laser power 30%. For even better result, set the laser power to 10% and down the burning time to optimal cutting speed. Here I try different settings of engraving into 5mm plywood. Laser got all the time on 100% power then just try with different burning time settings. I try also with few other materials. Anodized aluminium. Nothing. Cooper. Nothing. 3D printed PLA. It works but badly see, it just melted the surface. Maybe can be used also as PLA smoother, I don't know. Red electronic glass. Can be engraved but not cutted. Transparent plexiglass, upper foil untouched, plexi untouched, only the lower white foil was cut, and also on industrial plastic leave no traces. That sponge is cut so nice that I must to fix the X file of my logo and try to cut in maximal dimension. All goes smooth except white, that's why the letters are a bit thinner. Maximal cutting dimension is 150 by 150 mm, but if you work with the GRBL software, so without limit switch and motion sensor, working area increased to 160 by 160 mm. Here I try to cut buzzer once more with 10 passes, but deep of cutting is almost same as with 5 passes. I'm impressed how good is that laser for grayscale. You can see by the letters how good step it make from dark to light, versus old laser. Real carbon plate also can be engraved. Just look how nice it engraved into soft wood. But that's not all, it's work also from the back side. This laser works also in offline mode. We control them with the red button behind. If we connect the power supply and press once, we're in offline mode. When press second time it will frame the object, press again and it will start engraving, last file with last settings you send to a laser. Then press once again for pause or hold it for 3 seconds to leave the offline mode. I was wondering why I got the whiteboard marker with that laser, but I figured it out, so I called my daughter for a bit of help to test that one too. With that laser transferring from a drawing to engraved wood is extremely fast and easy. I forgot to tell that when I was cutting balsa I draw a square 30 by 30 mm and save it as DXF file. When I cut that square out I measure with the original with the toy caliper and it say 3000. I don't know, maybe I just got a big luck. I think that's it about the laser. I will leave some more action and results for the end. I'm really impressed by that laser, especially about what we get for the price. I think the biggest plus of that laser is CNC cutting. On that laser we can also attach 7 or 20 watt power NJ laser without any modification. Just for 20 watt we need a 3 amp power supply. I will definitely think about 20 watt laser, it can be seriously used to cut some buzzer model. And when using this laser please know these two labels. That laser is also super silent. I didn't tell about all the specification, because they are write it in every store and also here in the description. I surely forgot many important stuff, so if you got any question just leave the comment. That's it for today, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.